Another feature new to Windows 7 is the jump list, and a jump list is a menu of options. As you recall in an earlier training video, anytime I right click I get a menu of options, a different menu depending upon what I right click on. I'm going to go ahead and click off in a blank area and get rid of it. Well the jump list is a menu of options of any open or closed programs that you find down here on your task bar. For example over here I have my closed Internet Explorer program. When I right click on it, it opens up a window and down at the bottom it gives me the name of the program that I right clicked on and then above that it gives me the jump list or in this case a list of the most frequently visited web pages using Internet Explorer. So if I come down here and I click on Google it takes me or it jumps me right to that web page hence the jump list. So if I go ahead and click on it opens up the program and it jumps right to the Google home page. Now notice down at the bottom my Internet Explorer program is no longer closed the E is highlighted, I can still go ahead and right click on it and get my jump list and come up here and jump to a, another page or a frequently visited page. Excel 2007 training videos, boom I'm right there. Now I have two tabs open, I have the Google page then the Excel 2007 training video page when I'm done with them. I'm going to come up here and click on the white X and close out of all the tabs, both of them here, so I can close out of the program. Then come back down here and right click on the close program and you'll notice that of the frequently visited web pages or my jump list here, I think I have about, I don't know, eight or seven of frequently visited web pages. Well, if I visited more web pages than what you see here and it's not showing, it's because my list is limited. I can expand my list and say, give me the top 20 frequently visited web pages, or you can condense it and say just the top five. If you want to go ahead and customize that, just come down here, find a blank area somewhere on your taskbar, and give it a right click then go up in that menu and left click on properties then come up here and click on the start menu tab and go over and click on the customize button and then down below you see where it says number of recent items to display in the jump list mine set to 10 if I go ahead and move it down to 5 click OK click OK and I right click on that close program there we go I just get the top 5 now if your list is condensed like mine and you have a web page that you visit but not frequently so Remember this only keeps the top five, but you still want it in your jump list. You can actually find the page that you want when you hover over it here, the list item. Notice over to the right you got a little pin. If you pin it to the list, click on it, it moves it out of the frequently visited section and puts it up in the pin section. That means that it'll always be here, whether you frequently visit this page or not. Which is nice because every now and then I like to go to the Google home page, but I don't do it often enough to keep it in my frequently visited list here. And then if I want to remove it, just hover over it and unpin it by clicking on the unpin and it gets rid of it. Now, if it wasn't a frequently visited web page, it wouldn't be displayed down below. It would roll off here, okay? Because it only keeps the top five, even though it was pinned up above. But because the Google has been a frequently visited web page, it rolled down here into the frequent list. Another way you can do this is you can right click on it and you still get the option to pin and then come up here and right click to unpin. So in your jump list you have what's pinned or things that will always come up whether they're frequent or recent or not and then below that at least for Internet Explorer's jump list you have what are called tasks. You have two of them. The first one is start in private browsing that when you click on it it opens up the web page and notice up at the top it says in private. That means you can go ahead and start searching the Internet and not have Internet Explorer track where you've been or keep a history of it. I don't know, that way if you're shopping for somebody's birthday or Christmas shopping, do it in private. That, that way when somebody else tries to figure out your history, they won't be able to tell where you've been and that way they can't find out what they're getting for their birthday. I'm going to come up here and close out and then right click on the closed Explorer program again. And it looks like I had a few that rolled off because they weren't frequent enough, so I've gone from five down to three here, my frequent list. The next task is opening up Internet Explorer in a new tab. So if I come up here and I click and go to Google, jumps me right to it, and I want this window open, keep Google there, but open up the next one in a new tab to do another search, come down here and right click on the open program, and then come up here and say open new tab, keeps Google open, and it gives me a new tab where I can go ahead and do another search for that tab. I'm going to go ahead and close out on it. Of course you can come up here and click on the new tab icon next to Google here, the tab that we have open. It does the same thing, but going to go ahead and close out. Nonetheless, you can do it from right-clicking down below in the task here, open new tab. 
And then below that, of course, you have Internet Explorer. Well, if I click on it, what will it do? Well, I already have Internet Explorer, one window open up above. If I click on this, it'll open up two sessions of the program. Click on it. Down below, you can see I have one here, Google, and I have the second one over here. So if I need two separate programs opened up at the same time, at least for Internet Explorer, I can do that. Then I can just go ahead and, like I said, right-click on it, get the jump list, and then just go ahead and click on that to open up another session or another Internet Explorer window. I'm going to come up here and close out of that one and then close out of the other one. And then finally, in our jump list, when I right-click on it, down at the bottom, you see where it says unpin this program from the taskbar? Well, that's why that program is on the taskbar in the first place, is because it was pinned. So that way, when we close out of the program, when I click off, this program, Internet Explorer, doesn't disappear from the taskbar. It stays there. But as a closed program, until I can find use for it later on, and I can go ahead and click on it to open it up, or right-click and come up here to click on it, and it opens up the program as well. So you want to see what happens if I come down here and I unpin it by clicking on it, it disappears. Now that I no longer have the program open when it's closed, it disappears from my taskbar. If I want to bring it back up, then I have to come over here and find the program. Remember, when you click on Start, it gives you a list of all the programs on your computer. And up at the top here, the list of my most frequently used programs, the least of which is Internet Explorer. And when I right-click on it, it says, do you want to pin it to the taskbar? Go ahead and click on it. It's down, well, let me click off in a blank area. It's now pinned down below. And as you recall in an earlier training video, I can click and move this around and put that little program that's pinned to the taskbar in between these two other programs here. Now we just worked with one jump list here, and that was the Internet Explorer program. I'm going to go ahead and show you another so we can compare and contrast against one jump list to another. And I come up here and double click on the exercises folder and in it I've got a file that I created in a program PowerPoint double click on that opens up the file up above in a window and down below I have its corresponding button that when I right click on it I get the jump list now notice the similarities you can have things that are pinned and then down below instead of like we saw in the Internet Explorer jump list frequently visited web pages or frequent this one's recent recently worked on files or PowerPoint presentations, and it works the same. If I come down here and click on one of these, it jumps right to it, opens it up. So now I have two, my secure files and potential internet threats. I'm going to go ahead and come up here and close out of that one, so I'm back to my original presentation. Then come down here and right click on it again, and you'll notice that Internet Explorer had task, PowerPoint doesn't, but down below that, we've got the name of the program that we right clicked on, so if I click on that, it'll open up another session of PowerPoint, starting with a blank presentation. Click on it. There we go. Now I have a new presentation. You can see the button down below. And then you have the original one that I just opened. So I'm going to come up here and close out of that. Right-click on it. You can pin it to the taskbar. So when you close out of the program, as we just saw, it'll stay on the taskbar. And then you can close the window. If I close the window, it just closes the presentation, not the program. Okay. So if I go ahead and click Close, there we go. The presentation's gone, but not the program. The program is still opened. Now, if you right-click on PowerPoint and you don't get a jump list here, or you don't find one for Excel, I've come across this for Excel and PowerPoint, and there may be others. But when you're working with these Office 2007 programs, you don't see a jump list. It may be that the file that you created in PowerPoint isn't opening up in PowerPoint. And you're going, what? Isn't this PowerPoint? Well, yes, but it may be a converter. For example, let me go ahead and close out of the program. If you don't get your jump list, go ahead and find the file that you just opened up and right-click on it. And then in the menu, come up here to where it says Open With, and there we go, there's the culprit. There's the original program, Microsoft Office PowerPoint, the program I want it to open up in. That gives me the jump list. And here's the XML converter. Now what does that mean? Well, for Office 2007, when they created it, Microsoft, they based it upon an XML language there. And so what it's thinking is that these PowerPoint presentations weren't originally created in PowerPoint but need to be converted. Or maybe they were created in an earlier version of PowerPoint like maybe XP or 2000. So you want to say no, don't use the XML converter because I want my jump list. I want the original PowerPoint program. Now if I go ahead and I click on this, sure it'll open up in PowerPoint to give me my jump list, but next time I open it up it won't default to that. What I need to do is come down here and choose my default program so every time I open up that file that file is going to be associated with and open up with its original program, not a converter. So go ahead and click on Choose Default Program. 
You can see the default wants to open up with the XML converter. In fact, that's probably all you see here. You may not see the other program, the recommended one. If you do, select it. Make sure that this box is checked. Always use the selected program and click OK. If not, you may have to click Browse and search for it. Click on Browse, then come up here in the address bar, click on the C drive, and then down below go ahead and find the program files times 86, select it, double click on it, and then somewhere here find the Microsoft Office folder, select it, double click on it, and then you're going to look in the Office 12 folder, double click on it, it opens up, and then over to the right, let's see you got Excel here, we want to find PowerPoint right, well if it was Excel go ahead and double click on it, and notice when I find PowerPoint, at least on my computer, I get the name of the program and a .exe. That .exe is an extension of the name. Now if you don't see .exe or the extension, that's okay, you can watch my training video on file types or extensions and you can learn more about this. You're just looking for the PowerPoint program here. Once you find it, go ahead and double click on it and you can see it's selected down below. Once it's selected, then make sure that this box is checked. Always use the selected program and click OK. And it does two things. It opens up that file in the program and from now on every time I double click on that file it knows to associate that file with that program PowerPoint and not the converter. So I should be able to right click down below on its corresponding button and get my jump list. Let me come up here and go ahead and close out of there. Now if you like shortcuts for example, instead of opening up the Internet Explorer program that's on the taskbar, if I want to do it by using the keys and not clicking on it with my mouse, just hold down the window key. As you recall, it's uh, the key that looks like the logo here, but probably in black and white. Hold it down, and what number is this program here from the left? There's one, two, three. It's the third one. Hold down the Windows key, hit the number three key on the keyboard, and it opens up the third program on the taskbar. Come up here, go ahead and close out of that, and and then one final thing you ought to know about jump lists is that you can actually open up a file that was created in another program and have that display and available in your jump list. For example, I've got my promotions text. When I double click on that, it opens up the program Notepad. It doesn't have very many features here, just a couple of menus there. So if I want to be able to open up the text here in Microsoft Word, where it gives me more features to manipulate my text, I'm going to go ahead and close out of there. Right click on that text document and go down to open with and I'm going to choose Microsoft Word. When I click on it, boom, it opens it up and, and there are the names of the people I'm considering for promotions. Now when I come down here and I right click on the Word program, you see where it says one of the recently visited documents is promotions, the text, the one that I double clicked on and it originally opened up in Notepad, not Word. Well if you remember your Sesame Street shows, which one of these is not like the others? If you look at the icons here, they're all blue except for this one. So keep that in mind that while you can open up files that were created in other programs, they may show up here in your jump list. And if you want them there, that's okay. I can come down here and pin it. So every time I click on Promotions Text, it doesn't open up that text in Notepad. It opens up in Microsoft Word here. If you don't want that, well, first of all, let me right-click and unpin it. And then if I don't want to see it in my recently worked on documents, right-click on that and remove it. And then when I remove it, it has to have five within the list here if I recently opened up five or more documents, so it fills it up. So I now have five here. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel, get notified of the latest videos. And for only $2 a month, you can have access to all my Microsoft Office training videos.